The drone market has grown in leaps and bounds in the last year and drones have gone from being a niche hobbyist toy to a key tool that is now being used in a wide range of industries. Today, DJI has launched a new range of drones which have an increased number of capabilities and we're here to find out more. What we often see is people who buy it just as a toy, something that they want to take on vacation to take really cool photos. But then, say they're a volunteer firefighter, suddenly a, a fire breaks out and they need a very specific aerial perspective that only their phantom can give them. So, as a result, we're in a lot of firehouses in the US and in Europe. Every week we see new applications that we never dreamt of possible because people are able to use the technology and be creative with it. We've tried to simplify the user experience as much as possible. One of the things that we've done with the Phantom 3 is integrate a virtual reality simulator so that before you fly, you can fly virtually before you take it out into the real world. And we hope that gives new pilots greater confidence and greater safety skills before they actually start flying. Will I look up tomorrow and see a sky full of drones? At least the way we see the market moving right now, something like that is really unlikely in the five to 10 year near future. What we do see though, is the amount of applications in very specific circumstances, everything from agriculture or uh, construction or filmmaking where you have a very localized field where you're using these, these platforms so that they're away from population centers and not disturbing the local populace. I think there's a lot of interesting uh, progress that the UK has made in order to accept drones into the, to the national airspace. I think ultimately regulators and manufacturers want the same thing which is safe skies that are also open to innovation. Some of the steps that the CAA has taken have been really positive on that front. They've established clear rules of what you can and cannot do. And if you want to do something that is technically not legal, there's a clear legal process to apply for permission. And that allows for a lot more clarity and prevents misuse or irresponsible practices. The one thing that all regulators can agree on, though they don't agree on much, is that flying near airports is unsafe. So what we did is say, near airports, you cannot fly. In the area immediately outside of that zone, you have a height cap. We wanted to expand that system to a number of other locations where flying is patently illegal. And that includes Washington DC, where the FAA has made very clear guidelines that flying even a model RC helicopter is illegal because there's so much low flying air traffic in that, that environment. There's a variety of things that DJI is doing, both in the software and also proactively working with regulators. One of the things is the geofencing and also safe flight checklists that are built into the app. We also recently introduced a flysafe.djai.com function on our website, which provides very clear information on safe flying practices around the world, and also very specific guidance on regulation in countries like the UK, across Europe, and in Asia. Every Phantom sold either through our website or through our dealers includes that information. There's a wide variety of platforms that already exist, cars, helicopters, planes, that have a high number of accidents on a daily basis, on fatal accidents. I think it's pretty remarkable that these systems have logged literally millions and millions of flight hours without a significant incident so far. So I think it's a matter of setting expectations for how the technology is used and what are the, some of the significant safety benefits that using something like this as opposed to a helicopter or something that could cause more significant damage really provide. You know, certainly the, there are risks, but there are also significant opportunities. And it's understanding how those opportunities specifically outweigh the risks, whether it's Google Glass, telephoto lenses, or even the advent of instant film. So questions about how does this integrate into my daily life? and how can it be used safely and responsibly. That's a conversation that needs to happen between regulators and social etiquette that eventually will come together to define how this technology will be more widely accepted.